standing now on the ice of the Franz Josef Glacier, a most impressive, awe-inspiring, mind-boggling piece of ice this is. We just picked up a, a piece about a foot square perhaps and the consensus seems to think uh, that it could be 8 or 10, 12 pounds in weight. Imagine that the ice stretches as far as the eye can see in both directions. It towers above us here, now just standing beside a crevasse, and our guide tells us that that, that crevasse is likely to go down to 1,000 or 1,500 feet. That's the impression you get of being up here on the ice. The Franz Josef and Fox glaciers are the two most accessible of the 140 glaciers to be found in the Westland Taipotini National Park. They are also the only glaciers that extend down into the bush. The Franz Josef Glacier was named in 1865 by the German Julius Haast, the Canterbury Provincial Geologist, to honour the Emperor of Austria. Fox Glacier, 30 kilometres to the south of Franz Josef, was named after Sir William Fox, an early New Zealand Premier. Although these glaciers have European names, they were first discovered by Māori. They did not usually risk their lives in the mountains for recreational reasons, though an exception was the adventurous young woman, Hine Hukatere, who loved mountain climbing. According to traditional stories, she sometimes persuaded her lover, Tuawe, to accompany her, although he could not walk on snow and ice as well as she could. Once, when climbing at the head of a valley high above the west coast, Tuawe slipped and fell to his death. Grief-stricken, Hine cried for her lost love, her tears freezing as they fell, creating a river of ice known as Karoimata or Hinehukatere, the tears of Hinehukatere. This is the Māori name for the Franz Joseph Glacier. The Fox Glacier is known as Te Moika or Tuawe, the final resting place of Tuawe. The Fox Glacier falls 2,600 metres on its way from the Alps to the coast, ending in forest only 300 metres above sea level. Glaciers usually melt before they reach temperate rainforest, but both the Fox and Franz Joseph are exceptions. They survive at such low altitudes because of the enormous mass of ice that flows down from the mountains above. The glaciers owe their existence to the prevailing westerly winds, which push rain clouds up against the high peaks of the Southern Alps. Here, the clouds drop their moisture, which falls as snow, creating layers of ice. This adds weight to the glaciers, forcing them down like a tube of toothpaste through narrow valleys towards the forests far below. In the past, these glaciers extended out to the sea, but more recently, as a result of rising global temperatures, they have retreated. Though the glaciers are receding overall, they can have short bouts of advance and retreat. Early in the 20th century, the French dose of glacier retreated, but in 1907 it suddenly advanced. Two years later it retreated again, so much so that by 1939 a small lake had formed at its end, allowing tourists to go boating amongst icebergs. In 1946 the glacier grew again, and within three years, the lake had disappeared. A period of retreat followed until 1965, when, in just four months, the ice extended over 100 metres down the valley. Retreat then resumed, and by the mid-1970s, the glacier had almost vanished from the Waiho Valley. But since 1983, the glacier has steadily advanced and is now clearly visible from the lower reaches of the valley. While glaciers around the world are in retreat as a result of rising temperatures, the Fox and Franz Josef are defying that trend and continuing to grow, thanks to a steady supply of snow falling on the ice fields at their heads. In 2011, the Department of Conservation completed construction of cycle tracks through the forest to the glaciers, so visitors can ride through rainforests on hired bikes to visit the glaciers as an alternative to cars.